Hi everyone, I'm Rincy and I'm one of the contributing editors over at Book Riot. I am here to do another Read Harder Challenge video for you guys and I am talking about the task of read a genre book in translation. Before we jump into the books, I just want to mention that this video is sponsored by Libby. Libby is the one tap reading app that is brought to you by Overdrive. Libby is available on both iPhone and Android devices and you can use Libby to download ebooks and audiobooks through your local library. There there are thousands of books available and you might even find some of the ones that I mentioned here today available on the Libby app. So if you haven't checked it out already, I highly recommend doing so. I love Libby. I use it all the time and I definitely think that it's a really great asset to any reader out there. So if you are interested in checking it out yourself, you can head to meet.libbyapp.com. There will also be a link to it in the description below. So for this task, there are obviously a bunch of different directions basically you can go into, obviously just saying a book in translation that's a genre book gives you a lot of options and so you can either gravitate towards a specific genre that you particularly like or you can gravitate towards maybe works in translation from a specific country or region of the world that you really enjoy um, or you can use this as an opportunity to try something brand new. So I have a handful of books here that all fall into obviously different types of genres and I'm not covering all genres here and I'm definitely not covering all countries here. So I will definitely have a link down below to the main Read Harder Challenge task list and there will be a link to the specific post about this task and you can definitely check out more of the recommendations there. So there are a lot of really great crime and mystery books that have been translated from other languages. I feel like there was this huge explosion of like Scandinavian authors being translated. I think the Girl with the Dragon Tattoo series is definitely falls into that category. And if you haven't read that series yet, obviously that would work very well for this task and is a very good book in translation. But the one I'm going to recommend to you is from an author you may have heard of and that's Joe Nesba. He wrote The Snowman, which was terribly adapted, starring Michael Fassbender. That book is really well done and if you like mysteries and thrillers that are slightly more intense that's a really good one to pick up uh, but if you already have read some Joe Nesbo in the past and you want something new they just released Macbeth. I also think this one would be really good if you are someone who thinks they don't like genre fiction. So this is a retelling of Macbeth but what Joe Nesbo does is he turns it into a crime thriller that's set in 1970s in this industrial town. Uh, Macbeth is the head of the SWAT department. Duncan is the chief of police or the city commissioner. And Hecate, or he Hecart, I never knew how to say his name, I just realized until now, um, is basically like a drug lord in the town. Lady Macbeth runs one of the local casinos. And yeah, I'm currently reading this one and it's really well done. And so if you are someone, again, who doesn't think they like genre fiction or doesn't think that they like works in translation, this would be a really great one to pick up because it's really compelling in my opinion. And especially if you know the story of Macbeth, if you've seen it adapted or you've read the play or anything along those lines, I think you'll really enjoy this one. Another crime story that has been translated into English that I really enjoyed is The Gun by Fuminori Nakamura. Mura? I definitely butchered that name. I really apologize for this. That's probably going to be an issue in this whole video. Anyways, um, this is a short little story and you are following this main character who is walking by the river and he comes across this dead body and next to the dead body is this gun. And so he decides that he is going to pick up the gun and take it home and he becomes just like really obsessed with this gun. And this very short story or this little novella um, basically just follows him as the gun starts to take over his brain. He be really becomes obsessed with it. It turns into like a telltale heart type of situation where it becomes the only thing he can think about. It changes the way he acts, things like that. It's really well done. This is also one of those books that is best read in one sitting or as in as much in one sitting as possible because just going through the journey of his transformation is really, really interesting. Fumi Nori has written a number of books and they've a lot of them have been translated into English. This is the only one that I've read so far. I believe that this is also his first one ever published in Japanese, but it isn't the first one that was translated into English. So if that seems a little bit confusing, that's why. But yeah, I've heard really good things about all of his books. So I feel like this is just an author in general that you can look up and see which ones sound interesting to you and pick that up for this task. Another one that got quite a bit of attention when it was released last year is Fever Dream by Samantha Schweblin. This one is basically like experiencing a fever dream. It's another one that you should read 
in one sitting if humanly possible because pulling yourself out of this book is going to be really difficult and then putting yourself back into it is going to be really difficult. Like getting into the headspace of this book requires some work and I think that what Samantha Schweblin does in this book is takes you on this sort of deep dive. So again it's on the shorter side so if you decide to pick this one up I would recommend like setting aside time to it and just letting yourself fall into the book. So in this story you are following this woman named Amanda who wakes up one day in a hospital and there is a boy sitting next to her but she is not like his mother and you basically just follow them as they try to figure out what exactly is going on. It's like part horror, part ghost story but again it really does feel like you're in a fever dream while reading this book and I there's no other way to explain it and it's kind of amazing to me how she accomplished that. All right next I have another tiny one. Apparently I like to pick up all of the tiny books and translations <laughs> and that is The Blue Fox by Sion. Don't know how you're supposed to pronounce this name again I apologize. So he is an Icelandic author and he generally writes like science fiction-y type books. You could probably tell that by the cover. Um, he is pretty well known and well regarded so he's a really good one. Again you can look up a bunch of his books and see which one appeals to you. This one is sort of like a fable. You are following a couple of different storylines. One is a hunter, the other one is a naturalist, and another one is a person with Down syndrome. Um, and it's really interesting seeing how the story is laid out and sort of how all of them sort of come together in the end. Again it's a relatively short book and so just sort of going on that journey and seeing how things sort of turn out was really really interesting. So yeah that's another one you can pick up if you enjoy things that are more on like the science fiction fantasy side of the genre. The final one that I have for you guys is a little bit of a stretch just depending on what your definition of genre is and that is Aya Life in Yap City by Marjorie Aboué and Clement Obery. So this is a comic book and so if you consider comics to be genre this will work but it is a historical fiction comic book so I don't know if it necessarily falls into genre. I'm gonna let you interpret this how you will or just in general just take this as a recommendation to read this comic. It's really well done. So this is set in the 1970s Ivory Coast and it's just telling the story of Aya and her life living on the Ivory Coast. It's just like a really fun comic book. Aya is about like 19 years old and so you're following her and her two friends as they are just sort of living their life, going to school, working, dating, all of those different things just like typical day-to-day -day life and it's just like really fun and funny and really unique and I don't really see a lot of comics like this and especially comics translated like this. So yeah I think that it's super underrated and more people should be picking this up. Um, This is a specific bind up. I know that there are a couple of different bind ups so just make sure that if you are picking these up you are picking them up in the right order because there are a couple of different volumes that are out there and they're all like sort of different collections of I uh, stories. So yeah that's everything that I have for you guys in this video. Definitely leave a comment down below letting me know if you have picked out what book you're reading for this task. You can leave that as a comment as a recommendation for other people or if you have just general recommendations of books that fit in this category you can always leave that down below. Otherwise good luck with your read harder challenge.